You may be seated. Welcome to the white coat ceremony. My name is Robin Kimbrough Hayes and I'm the chaplain for Meharry Medical College and I will be offering the invocation this morning. Let us pray. Oh God, we are truly grateful for this day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We welcome your presence in this place and we pray that the sweetness of your spirit fall fresh on us here. We are truly grateful for this celebration of new beginnings, a launch into destiny. We ask, oh God, that you bless these students, undergird them with strength, encouragement, tenacity, discipline, and faith to complete the task before them. As they meet the challenges along the way, remind them that you have not brought them this far to lead them. You who have begun a good work will complete it to the end. Let the white coat be a symbol and a voice of their call to bring healing, compassion, justice, and change to our communities in the world. I believe that those who are here today are here for such a time as this. Our world needs healing and people to heal it. We extend blessings to all who will support them on the journey. Professors, parents, spouses, children, and other family. And we are thankful for resources. We all know that you are the source and supplier of all of our needs. Holy Spirit, come now and have your way in this place. And we say in our hearts to God, be the glory for the great things that you have done. And it's in your name we do pray and say, amen. amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. Thank you so much to our most able and efficient Chaplain. I'm Dr. Nelson Adams. I have the honor and privilege, and I might add pleasure, of serving as the chairman of the Board of Trustees here at Meharry Medical College. And on behalf of the trustees, the faculty, and the Meharry family, welcome. We welcome you this morning to the White Coat Ceremony for the School of Medicine, the class of 2026. Wow, the class, let's. The class of 2026. Let me begin by letting you know that I'm, I'm sort of pinch hitting. I am chair of the board and I was going to give greetings, but I'm pinch hitting for our president, Dr. James E.K. Hildreth. He's unable to be with us this morning. Uh, for those of you who've traveled by air recently, you know that flights get canceled left and right. That has been his plight. He uh, wishes that he could be with you and sends his regards. But trust me, students, you will definitely get to know your president, Dr. James E.K. Hildreth. He is your number one cheerleader. Uh, he loves Meharry and do know he loves you. Will you say amen to that? Amen. And so uh, I want you to, to know that this indeed is a very special day. And personally, I'll start by saying that uh, this is indeed a day that the Lord has made, and we ought to do what? Rejoice and be glad about it. So I'm glad that you're here, and, and suffice it to say that, that you are destined to be here. The man, the woman, who plans her way simply does that. But it is, and I'm simply paraphrasing, the Lord who directs our steps. Our steps are ordered. What an awesome thought that you've been directed to this place at this time and that everything in your life has led you to this moment and that you are ready, prepared for such a time as this. I graduated from this institution as a part of the class of 1978. I began my academic journey in health sciences and accumulated the foundations of medicine in these hallowed halls, I, I look fondly back at my time here 
It's here that I learned that my knowledge of science and medicine is built line upon line, and the accumulation of knowledge of science and medicine is what has served me well now for over 44 years since I left here to begin my own residency and career. It is here that I developed a love for this institution and what it has meant to those it has benefited in providing careers to those who have a heart to serve and the care it has shown to the underserved communities of our nation. And now you too are part of that legacy. I'd like to think that the moment that you decided to come to Mahara, your life changed. When you were notified that you were accepted, you were put on a new path with promises of a future to touch lives and to bring good health and well-being to those that you will serve. And yet, we must always remember who it is that set our feet on this path and brought us to this place and this moment in time. To the families that are here, so glad to see you. This is the first white coat ceremony since the pandemic where we've been able to invite family and friends. And we've gone far too long without coming together in these ceremonies where we can acknowledge your support and your nurturing. It is no small component of the success of these new Meharians. God bless you for your part in planting the seeds of success and encouraging them over the course of their lives thus far and on their way to this time and place. Folks, help me applaud the family and friends who are here today. In just a few moments, students, you will don your white coats as a symbol of your calling. Yes, your, your calling. And you will diligently pursue your course of study. You will befriend many along the way, and you'll meet those who will become lifelong mentors. You will succeed. And yes, you'll fail at times. But above all, you will persevere. But all along the path, you must ask yourself, what have I learned? There are grand answers to that question, and sometimes the most simple grain of truth you've learned will yield a mountain of knowledge. This is the path that your feet have been set upon by the one who guides your steps. And above all, remember that you don't walk the path by yourself. Just remember to do justice and to love goodness and to walk humbly with your God. And now, New Meharians, you begin. May God richly bless you on this day of beginnings. And remember this, you've been given a great opportunity. And there are at least three things that don't come back. The spoken word, the spent arrow, missed opportunities. To whom much is given, much is not only expected, but required. Good morning, and welcome once again. Good morning. I am Dr. Digna Forbes, Interim Dean of the Meharry Medical College School of Medicine. Greetings to all of our faculty, family, and friends who came here to help us recognize the class of 2026. I want to begin by congratulating the class of 2026 for the achievement of being accepted into Meharry and becoming a part of this historic class of first year medical students. Please join me in giving them a hand. I would also like to salute and thank the faculty members who came out to support our students. Special thanks to our White Coat presenters. We thank our faculty for mentoring our students, for leading by example, and for going the extra mile to help our students become great physicians. For this new class, the White Coat ceremony marks the end of a long admissions process and the beginning of your professional careers. The White Coat Ceremony is an important moment for medical students because it symbolizes the official transition into a student doctor. 
There is nothing more symbolic in the field of medicine than the white doctor lab coat. For over 100 years, the white coat has symbolized professionalism, integrity, and the highest commitment to caring for the sick. Today, it also symbolizes your first step in your journey towards the practice of medicine. Its purpose and foundation are just as important today as it was 100 years ago. A recent study by the University of Michigan, which was the largest of its kind, found a physician's clothing affects how patients view their doctor, as well as how satisfied they are with their care. Physicians who, care, who wore a white coat over business attire were deemed more knowledgeable, trustworthy, caring, and approachable. The white coat is not just a uniform or a symbol of hierarchy. For those of us here, it should be a symbol of compassion. When you wear the white coat, you are held to a higher standard. There are certain expectations that come with wearing a white coat. Not only are you expected to be knowledgeable and professional, but you are expected to be kind and show empathy to others. As you take the oath today, and put on your, own, your very own white coat for the first time, think about how you will represent yourselves, Meharry and the healthcare professionals around the world. Wear the white coat not because you have to, but because it's a visual representation of the life of service you signed up for as a future physician. Again, congratulations to the class of 2026 for the achievement of being accepted into Meharry Medical College I couldn't be more proud of you. Your white coats are your rite of passage into the noble profession. Please wear them with pride. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Good morning. So thank you so much for having me today. Special thanks to Dr. Forbes, Dr. Pinnock for the invitation. It is truly my honor to be here. But I must admit that when I first received the invitation, my first thought was, am I that old? <laughs> <laughs> to be invited back to my beloved alma mater to give the white coat ceremony um, speech. Then I remembered that I'm a dermatologist and I will always look at least five years younger than my stated age, so it's fine. <laughs> Seriously though, it feels so good to be home. My wife, uh, Dr. Erica Bridgeforth Hartman is also a Meharry alumna, class of 2000 from the School of Dentistry. And so we are truly a Meharry family. I wanna congratulate each of you on arriving at this milestone in your career. You have no doubt worked hard to achieve your goal of entering medical school. As each of you walks across this stage today to receive your white coat, your journey in medicine will begin. In the words of Sir William Osler, the practice of medicine is an art, not a trade, a calling, not a business. And you have answered that call. Being asked to speak at your white coat ceremony has given me an opportunity to reflect on my own experience in medical school. It has now been 24 years since I attended my white coat ceremony, a realization that gave me pause. There are a few events in medical school that I can remember so vividly, and this ceremony is one of those events. I do remember this feeling of pride because there is a lot of work a lot of hard work that goes into getting to this place right now. But more importantly, and more strongly, I remember a feeling of trepidation. We had arrived at the next phase, and it was time to assume our roles as the nation's next healers. It is notable that this isn't a ceremony that's done at the end of your medical school training, it's done at the beginning. The white coat represents attributes of a physician, some of which you have, and some of which you will develop. Studies about the impact of physician attire on patient perceptions and preference have shown that the white coat conveys a feeling of trustful, trustfulness and that patients are more likely to feel comfortable to discuss or disclose sensitive topics. Patients rate physicians as more highly hygienic, 
for wearing a white coat and note that they appear more professional, more authoritative, and more scientific. But did you know that the traditional doctor's white coat was actually a look that doctors borrowed from another profession? Back in the early days of doctoring, to add uh, some perceived legitimacy to the title physician, the white coat was adopted from my colleagues in the hard scientists who did actual experiments in the lab. If you recall, what we doctors call a white coat is actually just a simple lab coat worn by chemists, pharmacists, and the salespeople behind the Clinique counter at Macy's for years. <laughs> Until the late 1800s, physicians mainly wore black because by the time a doctor was on the scene, the overall situation was usually rather grim. At that time in history, medicine was not really a science yet. Real treatments for disease were scarce, and surgical procedures were performed in street clothes. There were no antibiotics, and we didn't have knowledge of the whole antiseptic thing. When someone got sick, sometimes a serious looking man dressed in black would appear, and the patient would often die soon thereafter. But medicine evolved, and today the white coat reminds physicians of their professional duties as prescribed by Hippocrates to lead their lives and practice their art in uprightness and honor. The white coat is a symbol of our profession. The physician attributes that the white coat conveys are not skills one achieves competency in and that are mastered by the completion of medical school. These are skills and qualities of professionalism that you will be honing throughout your entire medical career. And that is what starts today. This represents a contract of trust, honor, respect, and confidentiality between you and your patients. And being mindful of this meaning is how one maintains the integrity of the white coat. So alongside your medical education of learning a very deep understanding of the elements of health and the elements of disease, you will also be learning to understand illness. Our understanding of a disease and how it affects an organ and the body is just one level of competency. Understanding illness is appreciating the impact of that disease on a person and their family and loved ones. During medical school, you will have more time with your patients than, other, than most other members of the healthcare teams. Just by sitting there and listening, being open and engaged to understand not just somebody's symptoms or the medical problems, but also to understand their experience with their illness. People will share with you very intimate thoughts and concerns. This conversation between a doctor and patient will be different from other conversations that you've had in your life, and you will develop a new language for this. You will want to understand your patients better, and they will want you to understand them. In building this new language, fostering this new type of dialogue, you will be searching for the words to further and deepen the conversation. This was a skill that I was able to develop at Meharry. With this mission to serve the underserved, Meharry taught me to always treat the person and not the disease, to see the humanity in each patient and to provide the total care that they need. Now, the white coat is not purely symbolic. It's also quite practical. As medical students, you will be tasked with carrying not only a lot of information, but also a lot of stuff. You will be easy to identify by your short white coat and you will have ample places to carry medical items and reference books. Your white coats will serve as a repository for information. When all else fails, you can simply look in your pockets. Your white coats will soon be filled with spiral bound reference books, reference cards, index cards, and patient information, folded journal articles, and the like. As medical students, your white coat will serve as a time capsule for each rotation. The reference books in your pocket will change throughout the course of your clerkships. Your white coats will also carry medical equipment, including stethoscopes, pin lights, tuning forks. As a result, your white coats will be very heavy. Just ask any third year student. In this post-pandemic world, many inequities have been uncovered. Many disparities have come to light. And too many institutions that we once relied on have been proven to be frauds. It's important more now than ever to advocate for the total patient and to uphold high standards of integrity as a physician. And I do mean physician. You may have noticed a trend toward the term provider and blurring of the lines of the medical team with everyone wearing white coats. The physician is still the leader of the team. 
the one the others look to for guidance, the, high, the most highly educated, the one who bears the liability, where the buck stops. The white coat ceremony is a rite of passage welcoming you as new medical students into the medical profession. As medical students, you are bound by the same professional commitments that bind all physicians. This ceremony will join the symbol of the white coat with the virtues of altruism, responsibility, duty, honor, respect, and compassion. The white coat ceremony is a result of the vision by Dr. Arnold P. Gold, who in 1993 instituted the first white coat ceremony at the Columbia University College of Physicians and Surgeons in New York. Dr. Gold believed that the medical students should be given well-defined guidelines regarding the expectations and responsibilities appropriate for the medical profession prior to their first day of training and education. He believed that a declaration of commitment when students accepted the obligations of our profession should be taken at the beginning of medical school and not at the end. So today when you put on your white coat, remember that this coat represents the attributes of professionalism and compassionate care. You have earned this white coat and the honing of these qualities starts today. And I welcome you into this truly wonderful profession and to the Meharry family. Thank you. We will now have um, your, the students will now receive their coats. Um, parents and family members who are donning coats, you will stand up and come forward when your student's name is called. You will come to stand right behind them. The faculty member that is behind them will step back and allow you to don your family member's coat and then when everyone has been donned uh, and will go back to their seats, you will go back to your seat. All right, with Dr. Stewart's help, we will start. It will ask the faculty members to um, assemble themselves right across the front here. Okay, go on all the way down. Dr. Forbes will be right in front. Nena Achebe. Samuel Ademesoye. Deandra Aduche. Ola Deji Akenba Mowo Nafisa Alamgir Avani Alapati Hello, Cozy. (laughs) 
Oliver Alexander. Alexis Allen. William Ahn. Courtney Andrews. Don Aniakaha. Oluwatosin Ariwodola. Ache Zon Achi Asi Mama Doraku Azaria Atkinson Janelle Atkinson Janelle Atkinson Precious Baco. Journey Beatty. Teresa Belladent. Samantha Benjamin. Elizabeth Bernadowitz. Okay. Students, don your white coats. You may now return to your seats. Tiana Billups. <laughs> Marinia Bichet. <laughs> Nia Bowles. Madison Borden Ave <laughs> Tanisha Boyd <laughs> Austin Brown Michael Brown. <laughs> Sinanu Bwachi. <laughs> Courtney Campbell. <laughs> Courtney Campbell. <laughs> 
Kaday Campbell. Orlaine Caro. Glenn Chapman. Chinanu Chupai. Deara Cohen. Pierce Creighton. Oluwa De Mila De Dada. Dazane Davis. Stanton Davis. <laughs> Ashley Duncan. <laughs> Ikena Eke Anyanwu. Gabriel Ekechuku. <laughs> Students, don your white coats. Kristen Flewellen. Imani Gaines. George Gaynor. Richa Gandhi. Sandy Gerges. Shelby Good. Christian Michael Gopicham. (laughs) 
Brianna Griffin. Alexander Hariga. Latifah Henry. Maria Height. Sarah Jamal. Khadija Jana. and Stephanie Jenkins. <laughs> Students, please don your coats. You may now return to your seats. And faculty, thank you. You can return to your seats. All right, students, um, on the back of your, actually, it's, I think it's in the, the um, next to the last page is the Oath of Commitment. Would you find that and please stand. We're gonna read this in unison and I'll try to keep up with you. How about that? Okay. Let's start. As I began my career as a student physician here at Meharry Medical College, I make this commitment. I will accept nothing other than the full pursuit of excellence for myself in this my chosen career. I will hold inviolate the trust and confidence that patients extend to me as a student physician. I will always respect patients as persons and protect patient autonomy, elevate patient welfare above all other concerns, and treat all persons with compassion and dignity. I will treat all those who seek my help with humanism and compassion. I will offer to my fellow students any help or assistance that is within my power to give should they require it, and extend to them the same respect and trust that I wish to be shown to me. I will safeguard and nurture a culture of integrity and trustworthiness at Meharry Medical College and in our profession by encouraging my peers to act ethically and by responding appropriately. I will conduct my personal and professional life with total integrity. I will be trustworthy and act with integrity in all spheres of professional life, academics, patient care, clinical research, and professional relationships. I will not cheat, plagiarize, use unauthorized materials, 
misrepresent my work, falsify data, or assist others in the commission of these acts, and enter into a mutual relationship of trust and respect with those who teach me, recognizing that their aspirations for me are inevitably greater than those I have for myself. I will continue the pursuit of new knowledge throughout the whole of my life if I am to be among the best in my profession. Thank you. You can be seated. Y'all are here. Y'all are here. The first group we've had um, since the pandemic started. You will be the group that will graduate when Meharry turns 150 years old. We just, our future at Meharry is really bright because of y'all. I won't be here to see the next 150, but I know Meharry's in really good hands. Um, most of you I've talked with personally before you got here, and um, Meharry's in really good hands. So, um, I'm going to be like the Academy Awards. I'm going to pull out my little sheet here so I won't forget to thank all the, the right people um, for getting you here today. First, we'd like to thank Dr. Adams and the board uh, for their continued support um, here. They, yes. I've worked at several institutions and I think our board is one of the most supportive and engaged boards I've ever seen. So we really appreciate them. Dean Forbes. <laughs> Dean Forbes' vision for today was to allow you to invite all your, your uh, relatives and so Dean Forbes is who we have to thank today for not only having this. But doing it so you could invite a group, good group of your relatives. Uh, our White Coat Committee uh, helped out. And um, I, I don't see, yes, she's here, Tyler Dixon. Definitely my right hand, and without Tyler's help, we wouldn't be here, and certainly in such style and de uh, detail. Um, we really appreciate you, Tyler. All our volunteers, um, you will see them. They helped us get in here. They will help us go take pictures and uh, your family members to get to lunch. And um, so we uh, couldn't do this without our volunteers. We have faculty and administrative staff and school staff uh, and students, your upperclassmen, um, who are helping us. Dr. LaMonica Stewart, who is in the School of Graduate Studies, but agreed to try to help us with the names today. So we appreciate Dr. Stewart. She did a great job. You certainly didn't want me struggling over your names. <laughs> Dr. Hartman, we just appreciate Dr. Hartman for coming to give us um, the inspiration. All our faculty donors, um, and I'm gonna call their names and we really need to, to clap for them because not only did they done your family members white coat today, but they are the ones who are really in the trenches to train and help your now young professional um, be what they have desired, desired to be. 
So Dr. Samuel Adunya, Dr. Richmond Akataway, Dr. Larry Alexander, Dr. Anita Austin, Dr. Stewart, Dr. Bean, Dr. Exelana Bean, Dr. Millard Collins, Dr. Richmond Fremont, Dr. Lorda Williamson, Dr. Edward Hills, Dr. David McLario, Dr. Paul, I'm sorry, Dr. Paul, I'm gonna just call you Dr. Paul Matabu Bonwu. Thank, thank you, Dr. Paul. <laughs> Dr. Regina Fodale, Dr. Calvin Smith, Dr. Carlton Adams, Dr. Carolyn Satella, Dean Forbes, Dr. Suzanne Tropez Sims, Dr. C.V. Das, Dr. Linda Plummer, Dr. Ruth Stewart. I think I, who else? Dr. Tiffany Turner. I'll owe her cake for that full part. Uh, faculty members, we really appreciate you. They are the ones that help your folks do the work. A couple of more folks. The Jackson Street Church of Christ gave us the opportunity to park so you could be shuttled here. In shuttle transportation brought most of you here. And last but certainly not least, we really thank the parents and families for coming. Yep. Y'all to stand up for your family. We know it's your love and support that guided these young folks here. So we really, <laughs> we really appreciate you. Well, students, we started. We got a ways to go, but we're going to do it, and we're going to do it together. As I told you, Meharry is not a weed out school. Look to your left, look to your right, these folks are going to graduate with you. I'll remind you, you are 1.4% of all the applicants that we received. You are here because you're supposed to be here. I know there are some days that you're going to not feel like that, but those are feelings. We gotta work past them. The fact is, out of 8,080 applications, you are here because you were supposed to be here. So on the days you can't muster that for yourself, I have a whole group of folks to my right. I have some folks up here on the stage, and you know I will gladly say it to you. So um, we're so proud of you. We're so excited for you. And we're just glad you're here. Now. We are getting ready to recess out. Family members, we would ask that you let our students and faculty um, recess out and then you go out. Um, students and faculty, we will ask the, we have volunteers 
that will follow you with Mr. Morris um, and Mr. L uh, Lucius uh, Patnod. Did I say it right today? Okay. Maybe, maybe in the next year I'll try to get his name right. But uh, they will take your picture and families in the meantime over in West Basic, and that's the building right next door to this one, you will have your box lunches um, and um, we ask that you pick up those box lunches, come back out front and load the buses um, to go back to your um, cars at Jackson Street. Again, we thank you for coming and we're just glad you're here. Have a good day. Wait, wait to the music. Wait to the music.